Um, so hello everyone again. Um, today uh, we're going to talk about uh, the Linux uh, storage stack for the cloud. Uh, first of all, I want to introduce myself. Uh, I'm Yela. I'm working uh, for Red Hat uh, at the cloud uh, storage team. Uh, and I've been contributing to Ovid for the past two years. Um, I'm uh, living in Tel Aviv uh, with uh, my best friend, Snowy, as you can see here. Um, so uh, what I want to talk to you about today uh, is the design principles uh, behind the Ovid storage system. Uh, so what is the agenda for today? Uh, first of all, I want to talk about uh, why do we even need storage virtualization when talking about uh, virtual machines and uh, how we do it, uh, the challenges and the solutions uh, when talking about the enterprise and the overt uh, design and implementation. So, uh, first of all, uh, why do we need storage virtualization? Uh, when running a virtual machine on a single hypervisor, um, the virtual machine requires a disk. So the next solution would be to just um, add a physical disk into the machine. Uh, but what happens uh, when we want to run 100 VMs on this uh, hypervisor? Uh, we have a limit of the physical uh, disk uh, interfaces. But even if we didn't, then each disk has a fixed size. Um, uh, and even if we could join the disks, then uh, we would have uh, performance issues, and um, we have uh, storage array limitations, and uh, uh, also we have problems with using uh, multiple storage arrays. Um, so we use storage virtualization, uh, which is uh, what we want to do is uh, create a virtual device uh, with this behavior. Uh, the most uh, uh, basic implementation is a partition table, as you know. Uh, and we also have uh, storage arrays and uh, LVM, which we'll talk about later. Uh, so what are the benefits uh, from using uh, storage uh, virtualization? We get uh, uh, space flexibility. We can uh, create devices when we need them. And we can create uh, snapshots, which are shallow copies that uh, provide us copy on write capabilities. Um, so when talking about uh, an image in Overt, we first uh, define what is a snapshot. A snapshot uh, is a volume. And um, each uh, image is a virtual disk for a virtual machine. Um, and it is composed of uh, many volumes. Uh, each volume is just a sequence of blocks. So what is the actual problem uh, we're talking about uh, when we're talking about uh, virtualization in the enterprise. Uh, we have uh, different needs than just uh, uh, running a, a virtual machine on a single hypervisor. Uh, we actually may have multiple data center. In each data center, we may have hundreds of hosts. On each host, hundreds of virtual machines uh, with multiple disks on each virtual machine and potentially thousands of snapshots for each uh, disk image. So this is a problem on a very, very large scale. And uh, we need a dedicated uh, management solution. Um, so that's why we have over it. <laughs> um, so what I want to do now uh, is take this uh, very large scale problem and just decouple it into uh, three well-defined um, challenges. Uh, the first one is that we want the ability to run uh, the virtual machines on each uh, host on, in the data center. Uh, so we'll be able to migrate the virtual machines. Um, also, uh, we need to deal with a very large quantity of volumes and uh, an enormous size of storage. So these are our challenges. Um, now let's talk about the solution. So uh, the naive uh, solution for uh, uh, dealing with uh, virtual machines that are also independent is just when migrating the virtual machine, just copy the disk. But this as a very large overhead for us. So what we want to do is um, use uh, shared storage, as you can see in the second illustration. Um, so we've talked about shared storage. Uh, for quantity, we want to uh, create the volumes only when we need them um, and uh, use templates in order to reduce the quantity of volumes. 
and use a central database for, manage, for managing the volumes. Um, as for size, uh, we know that a physical computer only uses about 50% of its uh, physical storage, and for VMs, it's even less. So what we can do is use overcommitment of storage and uh, also uh, thin provisioning, which allows us writing only the data the virtual machine actually uses into the disk. Uh, and also here, again, we use templates that helps us, in addition to uh, reducing the quantity of volumes, uh, reduce the size of the storage, because we have shared data between virtual machines. So now let's move on to the Orbit implementation. Generally, we have uh, a centralized management, which is uh, the engine that we won't uh, discuss here. We'll discuss the hypervisor control bit, which are actually uh, managing the physical storage, the underlying storage. So um, first of all, uh, let's talk about the uh, Orbit implementation for snapshots. We use uh, the QCal2 format uh, for both uh, file and block uh, backing storage. Um, it provides us uh, with copy on write and thin volumes. Um, now uh, we'll move on to the uh, file implementation of storage, which is um, a bit more uh, simple and straightforward, uh, since we use uh, the file system mechanisms uh, to manage it. So um, in over it, uh, each, uh, each volume, when we're talking about file storage, is implemented as a file. So uh, as for quantity, we can create and manage the files just using the file system API. And we virtually have an unlimited uh, uh, number of uh, files. Um, as for size, we get uh, dynamic sizing by the uh, file system. And some, uh, some file system um, give us uh, sparse files, which also uh, helps us reduce the size. And uh, for shared storage, we use, we use uh, NAS, usually uh, NFS. And um, the file system uh, takes care of uh, the access synchronization for us. So this is uh, very straightforward. Um, now uh, we'll move on to the blocking implementation, which is uh, a bit more uh, challenging. Um, so uh, when talking about block, um, we have a few other challenges. Like uh, if you think uh, before about fun, now we need to ask ourselves, how do we even create a, a block device? How many block devices? are supported on physical machine. As for size, how do we resize the block volume? Uh, and is thin provisioning even uh, possible for us? Um, so um, the, the most uh, obvious solution that comes to mind is just uh, using remote storage. Um, it uh, supplies us the ability to create and manage volumes. It also has a native uh, thin provisioning and native snapshots, which are the exact thing that we need, uh, that we need, sorry. Um, but we have a problem with it because uh, we have uh, uh, in the market uh, different uh, storage vendors and different models. Uh, so we don't have a standard interface. So you probably ha ask yourselves, why do we even want to go through all these troubles? So, um, so the first reason is actually the most important one, that we have customer requirements. Um, uh, and also, we want to avoid uh, the file system overhead. Um, so uh, what we chose to do in order uh, to get a unified interface is uh, use LVM, uh, which gives us uh, uh, volume management. Uh, and we'll talk about it uh, later. Uh, so first of all, in order uh, to get the uh, shared storage, we still need to use uh, remote storage, which brings us uh, to using uh, SAN. Um, so when talking about the SAN, we have uh, a different set of termino ter terminology. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, initiate or target and LAN that defines uh, a GUID, a globally unique ID of uh, Loon. So um, uh, the SAN uh, uh, transports the SCSI commands over uh, iSCSI and fiber channel technologies. Um, and the SAN provides for us uh, a redundancy, which means that uh, each uh, hypervisor sees uh, multiple targets for uh, the same LAN. Um, so the question that comes to mind is how can we tell it's, it's the same LAN? 
Uh, so this brings us back to the uh, first uh, uh, point, which is uh, that we have uh, the GUI, the global unique ID. Uh, so what we'll do is use the standard uh, Linux solution, which is Multipath. Um, so uh, now we'll move on to our special uh, use of the Linux component. So um, what we do uh, when using Multipath is when we have a storage connectivity problem, uh, then, sorry, okay. Um, uh, then uh, we fail fast on the path uh, uh, and pause the VM in order to avoid uh, the I/O error reaching uh, the guest operating system and uh, disturbing the application. Uh, once uh, we detect uh, the storage connectivity is uh, bad, then we auto resume the virtual machine. Um, um, so uh, Multipath um, uh, uses uh, the device mapper in order to uh, map uh, the different uh, physical uh, devices into into a virtual uh, block device, one unified block device. Um, so it uses uh, the device mapper such as other uh, uh, Linux components, and we do the same use uh, also with LVM uh, for device mapper. Uh, so up until now, we've talked about uh, uh, solving the shared storage uh, challenge. Now uh, we'll move on to the quantity and size uh, challenges we talked about earlier. So um, as I said, we use uh, LVM, which gives us uh, a unified interface. Um, we implement, just like for file, we implemented each uh, volume as a file. Now we implement each volume as a as an LV. Um, we get uh, easy provisioning by using LV create and LV remove. And we have our own implementation uh, for theme provisioning, which uses uh, LV extend. Um, so up until now, it's very standard. Now uh, we'll talk about our specialist use of uh, LVM. Uh, so for uh, what we did for uh, theme provisioning, um, is uh, we didn't use the uh, LVM uh, native theme provisioning because it did not scale well for us in a clustered environment. So uh, we define each volume to have an initial size of uh, one gigabyte. And uh, we extend the, the logical volume when we get uh, an inno space. Uh, we try uh, to avoid that uh, by uh, monitoring QM and identifying the high watermark. Um, in order to avoid pausing the VM. Um, so um, as I said, we need a, uh, we are working in a clustered environment. And um, uh, we have uh, uh, the LVM operations, uh, the LVM uh, storage layout operations, which are um, uh, create, remove, and extend of uh, logical volumes, uh, which are all uh, VG metadata writes. Um, and uh, simultaneous writes uh, can cause uh, metadata corruption. Um, so that's why we need a clustering solution. Um, uh, so we could have used CLVM, but it did not scale well for us. Uh, so we need to find a solution uh, with no synchronization mechanisms in order to avoid that contention. Um, so we'll get back to our to our uh, implementation of, uh, of the solution. But first of all, uh, let's talk a bit about uh, our special configuration of LVM. Um, so first of all, uh, Fedora and RHEL use, uses uh, LVM uh, by default. Um, and uh, so what we wanted to do is use a separate configuration in order to avoid uh, um, affecting any other applications running on the host. So uh, we use a runtime configuration. Um, uh, also, uh, by default, uh, LVM scans uh, all devices on the host, and uh, we wanted to avoid this in order to to speed up to speed up our LVM operation, which are very expensive. So, uh, in in terms of performance, of course. So, uh, we use that we use LVM short filters because uh, we actually know which devices belong to us and and uh, which which uh, lands. Um, compose each VG uh, on our system. So um, this helps us uh, 
to compartmentalize the problem, and also uh, we can avoid accessing any other devices that don't belong to us on the host. Um, also, um, another special thing we do is um, that usually all, uh, all volumes in the host are activated. Um, but since we're uh, working in the enterprise, we have a very, very large quantity of volumes. Uh, so what we want to do is keep uh, the number of devices low in order to, um, to speed up the operations and um, uh, to uh, help performance. So uh, what we do is activate uh, the volumes only when we actually need them. And we also assume that, um, that each host is uh, Sorry, that each LV uh, is um, is accessed only by one host at, at uh, each uh, point in time. So that's why it helps us avoid refreshes of uh, the logical volumes when we when we need them. Um, also, um, for each PV, we have by default uh, one metadata area. So uh, uh, for a VG, we may have multiple. We, we do not may we by default have uh, multiple data uh, areas. This can uh, cause uh, corruption in a cluster environment. Um, so uh, what we chose to do is use only one active metadata area at a time. Um, we also uh, implement uh, the overview metadata as the uh, LP and VG tags. Um, and uh, in order uh, to avoid the uh, unauthorized uh, storage layout operation uh, from, uh, like, like as I said, like create and extend, as I said before. Um, then uh, we use the uh, log type 4 on such operations, which is uh, uh, read only. OK. Um, so um, Let's, uh, let's move on to our uh, clustering solution, which is um, SPM. Uh, it's the storage pool manager. It's a role we assign to one of the hosts in our data center. Uh, and it ca can be migrated to any one of the hosts. Um, it is responsible uh, for um, the storage layout operation, which are uh, creation, deletion, and manipulation of volumes. Um, and it is the single metadata writer in our uh, data center. Um, so the algorithm we use uh, is, um, is based on uh, uh, the Chocolate and Malky uh, algorithm, uh, which is um, a cluster solution for, um, for shared storage. Um, it gives us a, a single recoverable leader. Uh, and the primitives of uh, listen and renew. It gives us uh, a uniform solution, which means that um, it uh, scales well, and no matter how many hosts we have in our data center, uh, which is why we didn't use the, the LVM native solution, and, um, and uh, it is simple and efficient to implement. Um, any questions? OK. Um, so um, uh, for um, uh, we also uh, uh, use Sunlock. Uh, like SPM, it is uh, it is uh, based on uh, uh, the Chocolate and Malky algorithm uh, to determine the, uh, the cluster membership for the hosts. And, um, and and the thing it does differently is that uh, its leases uh, are based on uh, the this Paxos algorithm. Uh, which allows us uh, to acquire uh, the resource uh, in sub-seconds, which is uh, much faster than the previous algorithm. Um, so to summarize what we talked about, uh, so why do we even uh, need a storage virtualization for uh, virtual machines? Uh, the overt implementation for uh, snapshots, uh, for file and uh, block implementation, uh, how we use uh, multipath, device mapper, LVM, and our clustering solution, which is uh, SPM. Um, so uh, do you have any questions? OK. <laughs> so uh, thank you very much.